this game ends up going the distance here simply because Welcome to Vani Research Station, ladies and gentlemen, for game number three of this best of nine King of the Hill series, spawning in the six o'clock position as the red Protoss player, representing Imaginary Gaming, semi-finalist in Blizzard's WCS 2015, it's Wellmu. His opponent spawning as the blue Terran player in the 12 o'clock position. Playing for Team Liquid.net, otherwise known as the King in the North. Very soft spoken, but very hard hitting. It is Liquid Buddy. Alrighty then. So, I'm going to boldly predict that there's not much need for Bunny to switch it up here. On Vani as well, there is a humongous amount of a cliff area uh, for a Reaper to be popping out as well. Uh, admittedly, the Reaper can't go directly into the natural expansion because it is a little island that is private to yourself. So that technically does encourage Command Center first place just a little bit more. But hey, would you look at that? We have a barracks followed by a refinery. Why does that not surprise me? Wellmo, in the meantime, doing a little bit of scouting for potential proxies, by the way, before actually moving his probe further in towards the middle of the map. The gateway is, of course, down, and uh, he'll have a little bit less trouble in the early game with the Reaper, uh, only having to defend, really, the main base entrance. But the Reaper does have plenty of cliff area to get that uh, information from, so while I think uh, Bunny will find it a little bit more difficult here to kill off workers... He'll also find it relatively easy to scout the tech inside the main base, which is really, at the end of the day, what the Reaper is primarily for. So while we wait for that to happen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I wonder if uh, the people who predicted a 5-0 in this series are sniggering right now, thinking, yeah, that's definitely going to be the case. I can definitely see this ending in five games for Bunny. Well, it's possible. I would be surprised, but it's possible. 5-1, uh, I think, is the uh, is the most a hot seat has ever been won by. Oh, man, and this SCV gets into the pocket base to disrupt this as well. And we're going to see a little bit of Mortal Kombat right now as the uh, probes try to get in position to uh, give this SCV a run for its money. Unfortunately, not quite able to do that just yet. Doing a very, very good job, actually, of harassing it. And it looks like the SV's not going to get out alive. Is there another probe? Is there another probe here? Is there another probe here? Yes, he's going to intercept. Interception! Great pass there. Unfortunately, the Reaper does manage to get a kill in compensation. He's trying to get a second kill as well. He's chasing the probe. The probe's going in the wrong direction. It needed to go to the right and chase the Reaper further into the base. And the Reaper, he's going to get out. No, oh, no, the cybernetic score. Excellent SimCity there by Wellmu. And this Reaper, ladies and gentlemen, is a splatter of blood. He did get two worker kills, though. Take note. But it is two versus one there, and there will be no additional Reaper-centric uh, information for the rest of this game from Bunny's point of view. So I'd say that was fairly even. If the Reaper, like if it was just one for one in the worker and the Reaper went as well, I would say that went pretty poorly for Bunny. But the Reaper did manage to get that second kill. I love that probe. Um, just kind of stepping out from nowhere and saying, you're mine now. I kind of see it as like Neo stepping out in front of Agent Smith kind of thing. Give me your own uh, version of what movie you think that came out from. I just like the protagonist stepping out from beyond the corner with a sword in hand going, Oh, no, you don't. That's exactly what happened there. The Reaper, though, well, he brought the gun to the knife fight and therefore he won. That's all I can say about that. And the Mothership Corps with massive laser beams. Hmm. Needs to be a little bit careful though against three Marines. Three Marines can do an awful lot of damage. He shouldn't be stutter stepping into them like that. He could actually be risking an awful lot. And that Mothership Corps will be able to get away with half of its health available. Good D coming out of there from Bunny. And well, once again, Wellmu seems to be going for the fast blink. But are we following it up uh, with the double forge into the robotics bay? That for me is the question. He's, is he going to try and do it three games in a row? He's been pummeled, admittedly, so, so far in this uh, in this series. And I'd like to see him turn it around in game number three. 
<sighs> what else could be going on here? We seem to have reverted, by the way, guys, to the Game 1 strategy Bunny had. We can see the tech labs going down on the starport and on the factory simultaneously. We have the Raven coming out of the starport. We have the siege tanks popping out of the factory together with the Marines. He's going to be creating a sizable, sizable force uh, to try and out DPS his opponents in the beginning stages of this game. And if Wellmu once again plays greedily, he could find himself falling afoul of that as well. Now, this time around, he hasn't lost any additional workers. It's two versus two at the moment. And that's great for him, but uh, drops, I mean, he could be very vulnerable to them. And admittedly, I don't think they're being planned at the moment. And uh, Buddy hasn't really killed sort of 10 to 12 workers like he did in game number two, which basically means anything he does, he's going to be quite ahead for a while. So, if Bunny does exactly the same thing, yes, he can still win the game, but no, it won't be as effective as it would have been in game number one. So I wonder if Bunny's just going to continue going straight up for it. And look at this. There's the double forges. And there is the robotics bay. Now, you guys might be looking at this thinking, guys, this is silly. All the chrono boost going into the forges. The robotics bay coming down. Wormu's just going to lose a third game. Well, maybe, but also not necessarily. Because, let, let's put it this way. This is a game where Wormu has lost no additional probes, right? Since the beginning. So I feel like... What his build is going to set out to do, what he has planned for this build, is finally going to come to fruition here in game number three. We're actually going to see an accurate representation of how well this build holds up to how well the build Bunny has holds up. And once again, while well, spotting this from game number one and remembering how he died by Siege Tank should actually be a big clue for Wellmu as well. We see a, a sneaky pylon going down on the left-hand side of the map here. I wonder if this is going to be for follow-up Dark Templars as well. Five more gateways incoming inside the main base. Plus one, plus one, almost done. So he's going to be able to explode in units very, very soon. But I really hope he builds some units um, or chrono boost some of these gateways rather than just non-stop chrono boost the forges. That's what concerns me from Wellmu because he just wasn't able to get his army size up. And if you take a look, it's 47 to 23 at the moment as well. Um, Bunny's going to come very close to thinking about uh, prodding out at some point in the next couple of in-game minutes. And if he does that with double the army of Wellmu, I would be really, really concerned for him. Good hallucinated Phoenix will be able to scout the composition of this army, sees that their marines and siege tanks must be thinking back to game number one and going, Aha! I know exactly what's going on there. And he just wants to spot the timing when the army decides to move out. Not wanting to waste the energy on those sentries with another hallucinated Phoenix. Uh, and uh, reasonably good shout there. Will spot that nothing is coming down. Odd, actually moving forward here. I wonder if it's because he wants to blink in and do a bit of harassment damage at the natural expansion. Um, looks like he might have... Oh, he did just spot the Raven. Unfortunately, no matter how many blinks you get, you're not going to be able to come in there. And actually, I think that triggers Bunny possibly to put a couple of units here as well. Because can these stalkers blink? I, th I think these stalkers can just about blink in here. Although there isn't actually an observer to enable them to do that at the moment. Pylon's littering the bottom of the map by the way for Wellmu. He's doing a great job of potentially scouting drops. Still no additional workers killed in this game. And Wellmu looking a lot more comfortable. Look at this. Yes, his army supply is down, but 58 to 79 with 1-1 is respectable. Uh, I can get behind that. That seems reasonable. And these stalkers, I believe, have spotted the army moving out as well. He's trying to provoke, uh, trying to provoke the siege tanks to siege up. He's not going to be able to do that, though. Now he might with this force. He really, really might with this force. He might even just go for it. The tanks are so far behind. Bunny's opting not to siege them right now. PDD actually negating a lot of the DPS coming out from the Stalkers. Good thing back though to continue to allow the Stalkers to just absorb as much damage as possible on the Colossi. Kill off the tanks in the middle of the map. There are still two left standing here and the bio is starting to melt. Trying to pick up one more Colossus. Not able to do so. And this is actually the first battle that Wellmu has won all series long. This is looking quite positive for him. One of the Colossus goes down. A little unfortunate for him there. Blink forward. And the army supply is 50 to 37 in Wellmu's favor. So when left alone, when not harassed, when getting those workers 
uh, up to speed, if you take a look, when we're currently at 48 versus 47 workers, this strategy seems to be working out quite nicely for him. Plus two uh, armor is done, plus two attack is not. Is that an omission or is that tactical? No, it's tactical because we have plus three armor coming out right now. So a couple more units, small adjustment on the timing of plus two there for Welmu. And he's going straight up to plus three armor by the looks of things. Uh, potential for a, a Zealot Archon style... Uh, transition a little bit later on in the game just maximizing those shields so that the zealots can absorb as many hits as possible he's going to put his third nexus down as well a much more positive game from Welmu this time around and uh, bunny at the moment maybe a little bit frustrated but uh, this is a very very a different situation to what game one looked like excellent pick off on the medevac there this is a scary army the sea shank is going to be able to provide a lot of great covering fire but a single medevac with it does kind of suck and uh, I'm pretty sure Wellmu's identifying that as a weak point right now. He's prodding in with the Stalkers, wanting to see, can I snipe him in my back? Can I snipe him in my back? And... no. Tries to snipe him Marauder instead. The medevac was just way too far behind. And that's actually okay for now. I don't think Mel Wellmu has to push this without Colossi. I feel like he should just wait and get all of them again. That's exactly what he's doing right now. Number of Vikings on the field, by the way, guys. Six versus four Colossi. Well, a little bit on the light side in terms of Vikings, but... I don't know, I think with this many Marauders, uh, Welmu does still have to be careful, but his army is beginning to look reasonably scary. Once that plus three finishes as well, that's going to be excellente for him. Uh, I'd like to now maybe start see use him uh, using the double forges, because he wasn't really spending his money before, but hang on. Hold your horse. As soon as I said that, five more Stalkers and a Colossus on the field. Okay, fair enough. Welmu is planning an attack here. He's up in supply, 155 to 140 right now. His pylon placements, by the way, have been excellent for spotting drops, and he hasn't had any damage taken all game long. And now he's moving up with the rest of his army as well. There are going to be gigantic levels of laser beams uh, coming the way of this third base. There's only the one siege tank. There is only the one siege tank. And you know what? With this many Colossi out on the field, well, eight Vikings. Oh, two hallucinated Colossi. I'd love to see them towards the front. Okay. And they're actually towards the right-hand side of the, the Vikings. Yes, they go for one of the hallucinations first. That's potentially he's after the second hallucination. Second, this is the maximum amount of damage that well we can do right now. The Stalkers are doing so, so much damage. Kiting back with the Colossi against this small group of Marines and Marauders. But in the meantime, the main bulk of the army is doing a, an exemplary job against the rest of these Terran Force. Well, who's going to be able to battle Liquid Bunny back here. He's actually up to 137 supply versus 78. And Bunny currently backed into a corner. That third base definitely indefensible right now. But well, who's not interested in that. He wants to go for gold. Moving straight up into the main. GG's are called. And Welmu, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be able to win game number three to bring this series back to two and one. All right. And we have a series on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Welmu, after losing two games there, is managing to come back.